Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John, and I need to buy a car so I can give it away. For those of you new to the channel, I already did this once. Somebody donated a broken car to me, and I put a new transmission in it and fixed it, and gave it to a high schooler who was in need, someone who could use some help getting started in life. And the way I paid for that transmission is I appealed to you guys, the audience, and you guys generously donated. In fact, you guys gave so much money that I almost had enough to do it twice. So I've been saving up money from my patrons, and thank you patrons very much for all your contributions. Now I have enough money that I was able to, to get the second car, and that's what we're going to do in this video. We'll be giving away a car at the end. Now in this one, in looking around, I determined that it was going to make more sense to just buy a car that didn't need a whole lot of work. Uh, buying a car that needs work for money and then putting all the money into it after time and labor, it just didn't make sense. So. In this video, I'm just going to go and I'm going to buy a reasonable car. And what I've settled on is, after discussing with my patrons, a 2005 Toyota Corolla with 105,000 miles on it. I know a fair amount about cars, but even me, when I go to the car dealer, I forget to check things. I forget to look at things that I really should. And I thought to myself, self, why doesn't somebody put together a list, a checklist that goes in a logical order that you should go through every time you buy a used car? and then explain it in such a way that it's understandable even to people that don't know a lot about cars. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to take you through the list, we're going to check out this car, and then after that, we're going to go give it away. Alright, so the first thing you want to do before you even go look at the car is get online and do an internet search. Just put in the year, make, and model, and problems, and see what you come up with. And you're going to find a lot of different websites. Lately, the site I've been liking the best is Car Complaints and you click there so this is an 05 Corolla there's body and paint problems okay no big deal some electrical problems let's look at those real quick engine light multiple but I mean these aren't huge numbers alarm goes off for no reason so that's not terribly concerning to me and uh, transmission problems and engine problems are more of a concern so let's see the transmission problems looks like hard shifting and a check engine light and then a hesitation and then failure there's only two of those reported so not too bad engine problems there's only nine overall and we've got stalling oil sludge buildup it sounds like somebody didn't do maintenance yeah and these are all very small numbers so nothing jumps out at me here is terribly concerning and uh, just to make the point let's look at the 2010 Nissan Rogue. This is a car that I recently fixed and gave away. And let's look at the same website, Car Complaints. And we find 44 transmission problems, 24 engine problems. So you can see already this is a big red flag. You don't want engine and transmission problems. You certainly don't want them at the top of the list. So when you look at the transmission, problems accelerating, transmission failure, there's quite a few of those premature wear, vibration, so that doesn't look great. And then when we go to the engine problems, we see much the same things. It won't accelerate, it's hesitating, um, it's shuddering, and I think a lot of these are actually related to that transmission again. Again, that's got a CVT transmission if you want to learn more about that. Uh, watch that video. But just making the point that a 2010 Nissan Rogue I would be a little more hesitant on than I would a 2005 Toyota Corolla. So definitely do your internet search first. Okay, and here's the list I put together with a little help from several friends. It's a long list, but many of these things just take a second or two to check. This is not gonna take a long time. We've already done the internet search to look for any major issues. You wanna have those issues in mind when you're checking out the vehicle. And then you wanna check the title, is it clear? Are there any liens? And then you wanna check the Carfax report. Dealers will be able to provide this for you. If it's a private individual, you may have to uh, pay some money online to get it. Don't just kind of page through these. You really want to look at these and get an idea. First off, it's going to tell you an estimated retail value of the vehicle. Just make sure you're not overpaying a whole lot. And it's going to give you things like service records, previous owners. It gives you information on who all's owned the car and what's occurred. Now, it looks like we, have, we had damage and... Uh, issues with the odometer, so the odometer may not be right. Things like that are important. And I mean, this is a sample report. This isn't the car that I'm going to look at, but total loss. I mean, the car was totaled. It had structural da damage and it had airbag deployment. So 
uh, you better think twice about buying this one. You better be getting a good price. So actually the, the car that I bought, I don't have the report to show you, unfortunately. I looked at it at the dealer, but um, it did have some accidents, but it had no structural damage and no airbag deployment and everything else looked good. And they were basically just uh, two, two fender benders and they were back in like 2016. So the car has been working fine for a long time since. And then finally, right when I show up, I like to ask the seller right then, even if we've talked on the phone, are there any problems, previous accidents, recent repairs? Because you're going to be checking the vehicle out and you want to know, is the seller being honest with you? All right, full disclosure, I already bought this car and I did look it over at the dealership. I forgot to check a couple of things because I didn't have my checklist with me, but we're going to go through it all now so that you understand it and you will have the checklist with you. So we've already done one through three. Number four, first thing I'm going to do, now obviously you just look at the car, you get your overall impression, but I didn't, didn't see anything wrong with the car. It looks to be in good shape. You check your vehicle inspection and make sure it has a current inspection. If it doesn't, that's kind of a red flag. Why doesn't it? Has it been sitting? Did it not pass inspection? Obviously, if there's a rejection sticker on it, that's a problem. Oftentimes with the VIN number, you can look up who did the inspection. Did the dealer just do it or was it done by an independent mechanic? I'd be a little less trustful of the dealer doing it. Now, I'm not going through every little detail here. You know, if the interior is not acceptable to you, that kind of stuff's up to you. If the headliner's falling down or something, but I'm, I'm looking for major things that you're gonna regret buying this car. So we are gonna pop the hood and take a look inside. And what you wanna do here is you wanna look around for any evidence of something that was recently cleaned recently repaired, any leaks, stuff like that. Now this is actually a little more useful on a private seller because frequently they're not gonna clean their engine compartment before they sell it. Pretty typical for a dealer to do. I mean, I can tell this has been cleaned up. And, um, but, you know, looking down past it, I don't see any evidence of leaking. Everything seems to be in reasonable shape. I'm also looking for rust or anything that just looks out of place. And it all looks pretty reasonable there. Next on the list is not critical, but I like to check the battery, see how it looks, see if there's a bunch of corrosion or anything on the connections. And also, if you can see the date, sometimes they don't have a date on them. Uh, yeah, they didn't punch out the numbers on this one. It's nice to know the date of the battery. Those things are expensive. It stinks to buy a new car and immediately have to replace the battery. So here's some tools you might want to consider bringing with you. A mechanic stethoscope is a nice thing to have. Um, you obviously put your ears here and then you can point this and you can isolate noises. So if there's an unusual noise and you want to know where it's coming from, this is handy. If a lot of older cars will have belt squeal and if you want to verify that it's the belt that's squealing, a spray bottle with water is a good way to go and we'll show you that. A flashlight can come in handy. A magnet, this can be helpful uh, to determine if you've had body work because body putty is not magnetic obviously, but the panel is. And if you're trying to see, was this repaired right here, you can use a magnet to tell. White rags, obviously your hands are going to get dirty, but white because it's going to help you identify fluid. If there's fluid dripping off the bottom of the engine and transmission, you're not sure what type it is. You might be able to tell, is it reddish? Is that transmission fluid? Is it engine oil? What is it? Is it coolant? Maybe it'll be green. And then some gloves because you're probably going to get your hands dirty. Next on our list, check the engine oil and check and see if it's full and how it looks. And this looks good, even though I've already driven the car quite a bit, but it obviously is a recent oil change, which I would expect from a dealer, and it's full to just the right amount, so that's good. Now, if it's over full, you, you wanna be wary of that because that could be coolant getting into the oil, which would make it look cloudy, kind of milkshakey looking. It could be gas getting into or diesel getting into the oil. Those can be significant issues. Uh, you don't really want that. It's not to say you would never buy a vehicle that has problems, but you want to be able to know in advance, make sure the price is right for what you're paying. Then the next thing is going to be transmission oil, if you have an automatic. And that's kind of reddish in color. That looks reasonable. There's plenty of transmission fluid in there. So that looks good to me. It actually might be a little bit too high, but that's fine. You want to look at your radiator. Okay, so that immediately dumps into the radiator, so you can't see anything there. So you have to look here, and I can see the levels right there. 
and unfortunately you can't really get a good look at the fluid i like to see is it green you know sometimes they're green or they're kind of reddish in color but they shouldn't look all rusty and uh, cloudy also you know look at the radiator the radiator looks good it's clean i don't see any evidence of leaking or anything around it and then you want to check any other fluids in here you might have clutch fluid you're going to have brake fluid you're going to have power steering fluid and i can see that's a little bit over full but that's okay that's our brake fluid reservoir plenty of brake fluid which looks fine and then here's our power steering fluid how does that open it's one of those unusual tops that you twist off and yeah it looks nice and clean and a manual transmission you might have clutch fluid if it's a hydraulic clutch so for people that are not familiar with cars i mean this is the engine and the oil is going to be somewhere in the proximity of the engine the transmission is going to be down lower uh, typically and oftentimes i see the oil is labeled yellow and the transmission is labeled uh, orange these other fluids you know this is brake and i can kind of tell because i see a brake booster back there but it doesn't really you don't have to know what these are what you need to do is look is it full and is it clean so whether that's brake fluid or power steering fluid or clutch fluid it doesn't really matter unless you see a problem then you're going to want to know and you know same with this say it didn't say that it was power steering fluid well it's not full so now i need to investigate what is that but i mean obviously it says it right there don't get all hung up and feel like you don't have any value looking at this because you don't know what you're looking at you do you just need to see are the fluids full and do they look reasonably clean and yes that does it's not full of dirt it's not full of sludge this isn't a spacex rocket booster it's just a car <laughs> all right now we're to the point where you want to look under the vehicle so you might want to think about wearing clothes a jacket or something that you're not going to care about if you get down on the ground and you look under the car so obviously there's a lot to check looking under a car and it's very difficult to film so i'm going to put it up on a lift in just a second but the main things we're looking for are leaks rust torn or missing boots on your cv joints and shocks and problems with the exhaust and for people that aren't familiar with cars you're going to feel silly doing this but don't anyone worth his salt is going to look under a car before they buy it now obviously most people don't have a car lift but i'm going to pull it in here and we're going to pick it up just so i can show you what i'm looking at underneath the vehicle That's not going anywhere. This is my first time lifting this thing up, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. All right, so yeah, when I'm looking underneath, I'm looking at how rusty these things are. There's always gonna, well not always, but typically there's gonna be some rust, especially on a vehicle this old. This looks really good, because it's just surface rust. These, the frame, everything looks good. That's got plenty of good solid steel left to it. You know, if you're up in the rust belt, these things will rust out to where your, your <laughs> frame is literally falling apart. You don't want that. And of course, don't forget, now before I jacked it up, I already looked at the body to make sure it was gonna be safe to jack up, but this is a, an area that very frequently will turn into a rust pit on cars, but not this one everything looks really good the boots what i could see looked fine i don't see any cracks in those boots don't forget to check the boots that are output from the transmission to your axles but i don't see any evidence of transmission oil under here or engine oil but if you saw leaks like coming up from behind the engine that's a red flag you're talking about difficult to repair lots of labor you know, rear main seal, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you just want to be aware of that. Make sure you're not overpaying. If you're finding things like this, then uh, then the price may need to come down. Now that kind of surprises me. That's the windshield washer tank, and it basically has no protection. And I think it's probably supposed to have some protection. Yeah, there's probably supposed to be, well, that's not much. Something like that over here. The likelihood that something is gonna kick up and hit that is actually pretty low. It's much more likely to kick up and hit behind your wheel from your wheel. So, but uh, I'm gonna pass this on to 
the person, the ultimate owner of this car will certainly have the ability to deal with this and um, will probably be happy to do so. So I'm just gonna let him handle that. And again, the rotors actually look, they look like I can still see the turning marks on them. So those are pretty new rotors and the calipers look new. Well, at least that caliper did. This one looks older. Hmm. So this little uh, dust shield here looks like it came off here. I don't know when they changed the brakes, but yeah, that one's that one's about to go. But that's not a critical part or anything, and those are easy and cheap to replace if it ever needs it. So no worries there. Exhaust, you expect the exhaust to be rusty. Just kind of give it a tap, make sure it it's still pretty solid. The muffler, yeah, this all looks great. And look at your joints. That's a lot of times where they're gonna fail. Catalytic converters can be awfully expensive. All right, you're gonna wanna look at your tailpipe. Now you might wanna bring gloves if you don't wanna get your hands dirty. You just wanna see if there's a bunch of soot or anything in there, and there's very little on this. So that's that's nice and clean. And on most modern vehicles, you know, they've got oxygen sensors. You're not going to be running rich and putting a bunch of soot back here. That's more so on an older vehicle. But obviously, if there's a bunch of soot on any vehicle when you're checking the exhaust, that would be a problem. You also want to look, look in your trunk and look in the spare tire compartment. Here, you want to look and see, does it have a spare tire? Is the tire serviceable? But also, is there a bunch of rust in here? Is there a bunch of junk? Has water been sitting down in there? Is it disgusting? That's a good thing that, to check that people often forget. You also may want to check and see if the jack and tools necessary for changing a tire are still there. And now you want to do a little investigating for any evidence of accidents. Uh, I know because I already checked the Carfax report that it's had a couple fender benders. So let's look it over. Now this right here, that looks like something that's been repaired and has some overspray behind it. And that doesn't look factory to me. So I think that's been repaired in some fashion. Yeah, look at the gap on the other side. That's much smaller. That looks more factory. I hope it's going to show up on camera, but I can see that this is slightly less white than this and the hood. So it looks like the hood and the bumper have been replaced. Yeah, those match very well. They're nice and white. And then I come over here and again, this isn't quite as white as those are. So then, you know, you start looking and you think, okay, it looks like something's been repaired up here. Start looking at your edges. Start looking around. And then like that right there, I wonder, is that overspray? It might not be, but that might be overspray from when they were spraying that fender. You know, body shops do a good job, but usually you're gonna be able to find something yeah, now back here, this and the bumper both look very white compared to that. And I see on this edge right here, kind of some junk down in there. And I almost wonder if that wasn't taped off and this was painted. And then when they pulled the tape, it left some residue. That might be what I'm seeing there. But again, that doesn't look perfect. I can see a little peeling paint there. So that looks repaired. And yeah, this isn't as white as that is. But this is all matching what, what the Carfax report said. It said there was minor damage. One of them was a rear end, and then another one was like front, I think it was front right, I don't know, I don't remember. But it matched what I was seeing. You know, actually I didn't notice that rust right there, but um, it's not bad, but that, that's actually getting into a little bit of rust. If there was a lot of that, I'd be more concerned, but that's the only part I've seen. See up here, this looks perfect. Let me check that spot on the other side. Yeah, that looks good too. I don't know why that one spot rusted. One other thing to do is to check your VIN numbers. Most cars have a VIN number right at the bottom of the windshield on the, on the driver's side, but they're going to be other places too. And this car's got them everywhere. There's a, uh, there's a VIN number right there, and right there, and right there, 
Now, these things are almost always going to match, but if you had doubts about the vehicle, say it was it was crashed and you really thought maybe some major repairs were done on it, you might want to make sure those VIN numbers match up. If they don't, now you're talking about parts from different vehicles. Something's happened. So then you want to check the wheels. You want to give them a good push and a pull that way, just feeling for any play and then also sideways, especially on the front wheels, your steering wheels. So, but you want to do that on all four wheels. Basically, you're checking the ball, ball joints and your tie rods and making sure that the wheel doesn't have any wear on the suspension components that are attaching it to the vehicle. And even if you've never done this before and you don't really know what you're doing, what you're looking for is one wheel that's different. So, you know, if this one, I don't feel any play anywhere, so that's good. Um, if I had never done this before and I'm doing this and then I go to the next wheel and I'm getting a clunk, 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 clunk right there, well, you've just found a problem even though you don't know what it is. But at least then you know there's an issue there that you're going to have to deal with. So when you're wrenching on these wheels, what you're doing is checking all the attachment points. And this is one of the front wheels, so there's a lot of attachment points. At the bottom, there's a ball joint. Sometimes at the top, there's another ball joint. It depends on the vehicle. In this one, it goes directly into this bar that comes out of the strut. And then you've got your tie rod. This is where the steering wheel uh, is pushing and pulling on the wheel to steer it. So, you know, when you're wobbling, you're making sure there's no play here, there's no play here, there's no play up above. And then you've got, this is your control arm. These can also get loose. You can get loose here, you can get loose here. And then in the center is the wheel bearing. That can also get loose and that would make it clunk around. So those are the things that you're checking on. The back wheel is a lot simpler because it doesn't steer. The only connection it really has is the central bearing. So when you're wiggling on it like that, you're just making sure that that wheel bearing is tight. At the same time that you're checking those, you also want to take a look at the tires. How much tread do they have? These have pretty good tread left on them. You want at least an eighth of an inch. That's about three millimeters. A new set of tires is gonna cost some money, so good to know in advance. And then also you wanna see, is there any uneven wear? Is it worn all on one side? Is it worn, you know, sometimes you can get like dishing. They call cupping in here. That's more of an issue with your suspension, but you're gonna have to replace the tires if you have that, as well as fix the suspension. So just look for any uneven wear on all the tires and make sure they all have good tread. Another thing to do is to try to look at the brakes. Now here I can see the rotor right there, but uh, on some vehicles you can even see the pads and see how much thickness is left on them. Uh, I can't see it on this one though, but the rotors look okay. So I'm just gonna show you on my truck. You can see the rotor is really easy and the calipers right there. And I can kind of sneak in there and actually see the pad right there, right there. All right, leave that hood open, but we're gonna get in the car now. And as you're getting in, if this is your first time getting in, just pay attention. Is there any smell or anything in here? Anything that's gonna be unacceptable to you? Take a look at your gas pedal and your brake. How worn are they? Are they brand new pads on them? Because if that's the case, they were totally worn out and they replaced them. So the car's got a lot of miles on it. Uh, does it look like just reasonable wear for that number of miles? And same with the seats, especially the driver's seat. You know, how does it look? Has it been worn to where it's totally threadbare because it's been used so much? Does it match your mileage? Because your odometer may not be right. And I always like to take a second, look around the windshield. Are there any cracks? Is there any evidence of leaking? Especially if you have a sunroof, this does not. Is there any evidence of leaking around that? And then also just around all your windows and doors. Just give it a good look over. All right, now put the key in, put it to the on position, but don't start yet. And see what your dash lights do. So check engine light is on and the battery is on. Of course, it wouldn't be charging since it's not running. It's telling me my seat belt and the door is open, that's correct. And there's no oil pressure because the engine's not running. So nothing unexpected there. Uh, I do note that the fuel gauge seems to work. It's given me a full reading, but we're not going to know on the RPM, the speedometer, or the temperature until we do something else. I'm sure that horn works. It won't pass inspection. And now's a good time to just make sure that your windshield washer and, and wipers work. Okay, now let's start the engine. Started right up, check engine light went out, oil pressure went out, so everything looks good there. 
the RPM is working and we've got 105,000 miles. Just make sure that matches what they told you before you came and looked at it. Now, obviously you want to take note, was the engine hard to start? Did you hear any unusual noises, anything like that? It all seems to work well. It might seem trivial, but sometimes replacing a blower motor in one of these is a huge job. So if it doesn't work, you want to know that in advance. So now you want to get out and you want to listen to your engine. Any knocks? Is it shaking? Is there anything that seems unusual? And this all looks good. Previously, I was getting a belt squeal, but uh, it's not giving me one now. Later it came back and I want to show you how to determine where that noise is coming from. Very often it's the belt and this is where the spray bottle comes in handy. So there you can see the serpentine belt and if you want to check for belt squeal, a way to do it is to spray somewhere on the inside, either on the inside of the belt like that or on the inside of a pulley if that's accessible, which on this car it's not. But basically in between the belt and the pulleys you want to spray some water. And it's not going to hurt anything, but it should immediately change the noise if it's coming from belt squeal. If it's like the bearing on your alternator or your AC compressor or something like that, that's not going to go away when you spray it with water. A little bit of a squeal. As soon as you spray it, it goes away. So there you go. Yeah, that's just a little belt squeal. Not a big deal. If the noise didn't go away with the water, this is where you use the mechanic stethoscope. You can point that hose at different pulleys and usually isolate the noise. Now let's take another look at the exhaust pipe. Do you see any smoke? Now when a car just just starts up, you might get a little bit of steam. It wouldn't, you know, that's, that stuff goes away just a few feet from the exhaust pipe. If you're actually putting out smoke and it stays in the air and you can see it drift away, well that's an issue. And then you need to look, is that blue smoke, gray smoke, black smoke, or is it white smoke? Because if it's putting out a lot of steam, that can be evidence of a blown head gasket. That's a pretty expensive repair. So, and before it heats up too much, you want to come back here and put your hand over the exhaust pipe and listen for any exhaust leaks. And I don't hear any, but if there was an exhaust leak up front, that would make that much louder to do that. A little bit of dripping from the exhaust pipe is normal. That's condensation. One of the byproducts of burning hydrocarbons is water and it condenses on the pipe and then we'll drip out. So we're finally ready for a test drive. So we're going 70 and everything feels good. Steering's tight. There's no shaking or vibrations that I can feel. When I hit the brakes, there's no shuddering. And uh, yeah, this thing's driving really, really well. Really well considering it's a 2005. Putting it in drive. Let's go back in the park in reverse and it's shifting just fine it's not clunking in and feels very natural so that's good all right let's gun it that's all she's got did just fine and also the temperature gauge is working and it's not overheating so that's good want to do a gentle drive you want to really give it some gas and give it some braking all right so let's check the brakes so no shuttering I didn't push them real hard there let's push them harder and see how they do it's good now if I felt shuttering if it was more in the steering wheel it would be the front brakes if I felt it more in my butt it would be the rear brakes it's not pulling to one side or the other, so the alignment's good. And then I don't hear any noises in this car that concern me, but if you did, and you think, well, maybe that's a wheel bearing or something, you want to load that wheel bearing and see if the noise changes. So if I heard a noise, I would get on a road like this where I can drive a little crazy. I'm on a back road, and I would go side to side. So I'm loading the right wheels, I'm loading the left wheels, so if I heard the noise now and then it went away, I would suspect a right wheel bearing. So I'm in a little parking lot and I'm all the way right. No clunks or noises. All the 
the way left. Again, no clunks or noises. If you had a CV joint problem, you might hear like clunk, 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 clunk right now. So that's good. My first car was a Toyota Corolla, 1977, royal blue. It was a manual four-speed, had four gears. If you're going downhill, you could get up to 55. How much did it cost you? 400 bucks. <laughs> so we did our test drive and the car has been sitting here and I don't see any evidence of leaks anywhere. So that's good. And yes, I bought the car. I had an hour drive home with it. So we made it. It drives really well. Everything works. Power mirrors, power windows, cruise control, AC works, the heater works, all the blower speeds work. Yeah, this is gonna be a real good first car for somebody. I probably spent too much for this car, but I don't think there's any car you can buy right now where you don't spend too much. I looked for a long time trying to find a car that was gonna be reliable and a good first car for somebody. And this was the best I came up with after looking for quite some time. Now, you can get different models of vehicles, different makes that uh, you could certainly get cheaper than this. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, I spent $6,900 on this car. Now I should qualify that actually you guys spent $6,900 on this car, plus, plus some from my patrons, and um, put this together. Toyotas really hold their value. This thing only has 105,000 miles on it. It'll go to 200, and it's, it's really in very good shape for its age. So that's why I opted for this car. I think it's gonna be a good, reliable ride for somebody. That leads us directly into the next part of this video. So we are going to meet a guy named Chris. I've never met him before myself, but I can tell you he's 18, he's just about to finish high school, and he's already working to help support his family. His father is an auto mechanic, but lost both of his lower legs and can't work anymore. So now he's helping Chris to learn the trade. Chris has no idea what's about to happen. This will be a total surprise to him. It's Saturday, just after 4 p.m., and he's been working on cars since early this morning. He literally just got home. And look how he responds to this stranger who pulls up in his driveway and asks him to look at his car. Hey, how you doing? Doing good. How about you? Good. Uh, Are you? Okay. Yeah. You're Chris. Much. Hey, I'm John. Nice to meet you, John. My I, name's Chris. I hear you work on cars. You've been working on one all day. Oh yeah, near. Had a rough day. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like it's like chasing a mouse with those problems. As soon as you fix one, the other one appears. Yeah. <laughs> and then they always show up at the worst time. As soon as you're pulling out of Walmart. Check engine light. So maybe we can make your day a little better. I'll pay you real well if you can fix this car. Hmm. What seems to be the problem? It was making some funny noise. We just bought it. I noticed because of the tags. And I'll pay you real well. I mean, what seems to be what's like? I hate you. Describe the noise. Well, it, it might just be a belt squeal. Fancy. This might be, is this a one eight or a one six? I don't know. One eight. Okay, you got the nice one. Okay. The belt looks a little, wee bit old there. You see how belts are exactly like people. Whenever they get old and tired, they always get wrinkly. Careful now. <laughs> you see how? Careful now. You're talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> So you're saying it just needs a new belt? It, it might, but usually whenever you replace the belt, one out of three times a tensioner would be good too. We just got done doing a tensioner on a 98 Pontiac. I'll tell you what, just crank it up this here and here's the noise. Kind of. It's kind of intermittent. I, I'll tell you what though, here's the deal. If you, if you can fix this, you can have it. I'm not doing it now. He's getting the DV king. Alright, Kirk, you know what that is? Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I think you fixed it. You want it? He's, he's going, what in the world is this guy talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. So, uh, let me turn this off. So, I'm John. I have a YouTube channel, and I bought this car for you. Really? I did. 
How and, the heck did you hear me? And actually, I should say I didn't. I didn't buy it. I I helped make this happen. So um, someone donated a car to me, and I have a b pretty big audience on YouTube, and I appealed to them to help me pay for a transmission to fix it. And I did that, but they gave me so much money that I had enough to buy a second car. And I gathered some names on people that could use a leg up getting started. And uh, your name was on the list, so um, congratulations. Oh my God! This is I'm this is your cry. this is your car. Come here. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, let me tell you something. I, I lost both legs. I'm a mechanic. I do mechanic work. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he's following my footsteps. Mm -hmm. We need good mechanics. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's just, just blowing my mind. We've been working on this for uh, at least a week. <laughs> She's and yeah. mom has kept a secret. So that's why. That's why Angela texted me to be home. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a surprise for you. He said, we got to get home. We got a surprise for mom. Don't get it dirty with them hands now. I'm trying not to. <laughs> That's to pay for your taxes and a little bit more. Feels weird seeing my name up here. I feel like I'm the price is right right now. Can I see what you got? Oh, wow. All right. That will help. And this, this is for real. No, this is no for real. real. No, absolutely. You just have to go to the DMV and do the, the title work. Somebody got peaches? Maybe. <laughs> so your dad said you got an automotive award? What was that? Oh, it's uh, since they opened up the shop back up at the school where they do automotive work. Mm -hmm. And apparently I was such a a good kid to, to work with, I got an award because of it. Nice. I nearly done worked on, I don't want to make it sound like I'm tooting my horn, but <laughs> I, ne I nearly worked on half the teacher's cars. <laughs> He's good at diagnosing. You know all the computer stuff too, the scanners and everything? Oh, I fell in love with the new Snap-on mm -hmm. computer. Hey, do me a favor, thank, thank them. Yeah. <laughs> my audience that, that yeah. paid the bill. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> If it wasn't for people like you, oh my God. It's gonna be a, a huge relief to have transportation. Reliable too. God. So a big congratulations to Chris and thanks again to everybody who donated. Uh, that was just awesome. One more thing that's always a great idea when buying a used car is to have a trusted mechanic check it out. Especially someone who can hook it to a scanner and see if there's any trouble codes or anything like that. Now keep in mind some unscrupulous dealers will uh, they'll go in and they'll reset all the codes. A lot of those trouble codes take time to set. So if they've just reset them just recently before you go to look at the car then um, even your mechanic may not find things that are wrong with it when they hook it to their scanner because those codes haven't reset yet. Obviously, if you're buying from a dealer or anybody, you know, try to find out if they're honest or not. Uh, most people are honest, but unfortunately there, is, there are plenty that aren't. On the list, you'll see a few other things to check, and I can update that list over time. If people throw out ideas and they're good ones, uh, I'll add them to the list. Check the link in the description to see the checklist. Uh, I'm going to make it a Google document that anybody can download. I hope you find it helpful, and if you do, eh, maybe I've earned a thumbs up at least. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one.